Now, before I could even get started, uh, the obvious thing I need to do is to download the HTML file and the external style sheet and save them to my computer locally. Now, I've done that prior to shooting this video, and what I have here, I just renamed it. I have index.html, which is the actual HTML file um, that has all the uh, code for the site. And this is just the semantic markup, right? This is just the content, and it, it says what's a div, what's not a div, and, you know, uh, the paragraph and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the other thing I downloaded was the style sheet. Now, for my design, since it was the main style sheet, it was 001. And you may see that I'm using a, this text editor called Text Wrangler. Um, now you'd say, well, why are you, you know, you see that I have Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver here, and you say, well, why are you opening it up with a text editor? This is just a free, a free piece of software that I that I found online versus Dreamweaver, which is really powerful and robust and all that. And you know, absolutely right. If I was going to do a bigger site design. I would go with Dreamweaver, but literally all I'm going to do, at least for this, uh, for dissecting the code, I'm just going to, going to be editing the text, the uh, the code directly. So I'd rather use an application that's a little more lightweight, right? Because that way I, I keep Dreamweaver closed, and it's not using up my system resources, and my computer is just going to run faster. Now, it, there's no right or wrong answer to this. If you want to use Dreamweaver, do it go ahead and um, but for me I went with um, text wrangler so here's what I'm gonna do to start dissecting this code now here is the unedited um, style sheet and when we look when we preview this other uh, the actual HTML file you'll notice that uh, this is what it looks like locally on my computer. You'll notice there's no graphics, and here's what it looks like on the Zen Garden site because there are graphics. Now, the reason this is is I didn't download the graphics for this, but there's actually a way I could sidestep that. So, um, the two things I'm going to do to begin working and editing the style sheet, and I don't want, no, I'm not going to edit it right now. I, I, just to correct myself, I'm going to dissect it. So I'm just going to take stuff out. Now, the only thing I'm interested in is the fundamental layout. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to pull out all the rest of the code, right? It doesn't matter. I, this is this sheet I could download over and over again off the site. But I'm going to, down, I'm going to delete all the rest of the code except the ID selectors. And the ID selectors are uh, what are defining these div tags over here in their positioning. Now I know that I, I know that things are ID selectors because if you notice here, I'm just going to delete all this, ID selectors um, only start out with uh, with that with the pash sign or the pound sign and then they're given a name and there's nothing afterwards. So anything that now I put up this this markup in here in a previous tutorial where I put ID selector, but I know that an ID selector is just that. It's just it has pound and one name, and it's not. Just be careful that see here, right here. This is this is a um, a more sophisticated ID selector because this, like you know, we have pound header space h2, and this is targeting just the header two in page header. Uh, you know what? For this tutorial, it's kind of moving ahead. I just want to be clear that. Um, this is not what we're looking for. We're looking for just the single word ones, and actually they would be, uh, according to my picture over here, I know all of them because I got container, page header, quick summary. So uh, let's see what I'm looking at. I got container here, intro. See now this says page header h1. That's out. I don't want that. And this is page header h1 span and page header h2 and then blah blah blah. This is all wrong. I'm going to delete all this stuff except the one that's just page header. And I'm going to just go on and find everything that's more than what I want. Let's see. So what I'm going to end up with is a page that has no other um, formatting except uh, for really positioning, just the layout. So linked list one, two, 
Okay, access key. No, that's a it's a class selector. So let's see. Okay, so now that looks about right to me. So everything is just a pound and this. So now I just saved the sheet and let me if I go to my page again, I'm going to refresh it. Okay, now that looks about right. Now you see none of this text is formatted, and I'm just uh, staring at the text uh, with the system with the defaults that I set it, except for this over here, but that's something else. And but we have no images. So the last thing I want to show you here is that anywhere where you see images inside of this. Um, inside one of these div tags like for example we have container and it says background colon URL and it has slash zero zero one slash zen dash bg dot jpeg well that's a um, a relative link and what that means is that when this page is up on the web the distance between the index page and the graphic uh, that is supposed to be in container is um, just two folders deep or just one folder deep so what I could do is I could add I could change this into an absolute URL and I'm gonna see the graphic and the way I would do that is if I go to zengarden.com and the actual and just get the actual URL so let's see so here's the actual URL HTTP and you know you have zengarden.com and I copy that and I put it in here I want to make sure that when I put it to URL I put it right before where it has that picture so I'm gonna paste it in there and I want to make sure that I only have one dash so I'm gonna have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash zengarden.com forward slash zero zero one forward slash the back of the uh, the image the JPEG that's there so I'm just gonna copy and paste this HTTP colon uh, forward slash forward slash CSSZenGarden.com before anywhere where I see an image because that way I'll be able to see the images and how they relate to the layout so now when I go back again this is what it looks like locally once I refresh this okay now it's kinda at least from here I have a better idea of um, what the images are doing uh, within uh, the positioning of all the different elements.